Hello, welcome back. Or is it me, welcome back? I am Dr. Hugh. That's not W-H-O, like, who have you been? Do I need to push the button? No, you just, I think, move your mic up, maybe. It's right here. What do you want me to do, put it in my mouth? It's a toothbrush. Can you hear me? What color light's supposed to be on there? No, it, it's on. It's, oh. it's fuzzy. Fuzzy Wuzzy has a bear. So what do I do? Keep going. Keep going. Hey. You, you blew my punchline. Dr. Who. W-H-O. No, I'm Dr. Hugh. We're on Facebook and YouTube. So if you have any live questions, that's what we're about. Answering your questions about installs of uh, our kits or gas systems or whatever you may have. Is it bad? Oh, okay. So just letting you know that the the lamp of knowledge is now lit, and uh, actually my my lamp is getting low. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see in there? Or my lamp's getting low. I gotta got to fill it. I've got to fill it. You got to fill it, fill it. All right. Well, uh, purpose of shows answer your questions, and so without your questions, we have nothing to say. So today our program is about, oh, there's a mail on Brian's desk. You want to get that one? I suppose he could read it. Uh, but, uh, oh yeah, and if you want to be a dealer, how come I never have that thing here? Info at uscarb.com. We'll send you the dealer paperwork. Hope you can join us for that. There's good profit to be made there. Shouldn't leave the camera scene. All right, so what's up, Mr. Producer Man? I can't do no voices. I got no voices to do. You make me sick. Can you hear me read this? I don't know, you're the producer. I'm just, I'm a flunky. I sit back here, put my hand over the flame. Ah, see, I can't, and I'm burning myself. All right, well. <laughs> oh, doctor's in. <laughs> Hello. All right, so we do have a question here that uh, I guess came in via mail. So this question is from Bill. It says, when I remove the hose connection from my propane tank mm -hmm. on my Weber drill, a very oily and foul smelling substance is expelled out of the hose and continually drips out of the hose. I don't know what you're cooking, but all right, go ahead. The tank is 20 pounds, seven years old. Weber tells me that the diaphragm in the regulator is bad. <laughs> On my third regulator from Weber and still getting the oil when removing the hose, the gas supplier said there is nothing wrong with the tank or his gas. Can you shed any light on the problem? I have your snorkel on my generator and wondering if using my grill tank in an emergency would have any effect on the gen set or your snorkel. I sure wish we could get longer questions, but uh, all right, the oily substance that you are getting out of your hose is ethyl mercaptan. Now, the only way to get ethyl mercaptan to break out of propane is it either settles to the bottom of a propane tank when it boils, so it's basically separating when propane boils. So that's why old tanks stink. You can have 20% left in an old tank and everybody thinks it's leaking. We used to go out on service calls all day long where people swore their tank, their gas was leaking uh, because they had a space heater. And it was nothing but ethyl mercaptan at the bottom of the tank. Now, how is it possible for this gentleman to have the substance in his hose? There is only one thing I can think of. There's two I can think of, but one's stupid. But yeah, one thing I can think of that is probably the culprit. To break out the ethyl mercaptan, it either needs to boil out, like this is doing. This should be boiling. If you can see it boiling. See, as that's boiling, some ethyl mercaptan is being contained down below trace amounts that take years to build up. 
the only other way is just like the refinery is overheating the gas and you can crack out the ethyl mercaptan because it's an oil there's 30 a pint to 30,000 gallons of propane so my guess would be that somehow your gas line uh, from the tank to the burner system is somehow in a hot zone and it's overheating the propane vapor on its way through because you'll get the same substance in a forklift uh, a lot of times if the engine is running too hot yeah and so uh, that's why a lot of guys like to hang the regulator upside down on a forklift so the oil will drip out of it and burn but uh, then that saturates the hose and the hose goes bad but anyway that is the only way i can think that you could ever get ethyl mercaptan to appear in a delivery hose too much heat but no the the gas supplier it's not his fault uh, and it's not a bad diaphragm a bad diaphragm would all that does is control the pressure I mean, unless it's an, an evil wicked diaphragm but depends what people mean by bad like the show you know bad I'm ready. I think I. Does that sound good, Sean? Sean's. You know, he verifies. Actually, there. What else we have here? Nobody wants to ask a question today. I don't know where that voice is coming from. <laughs> La -da. Our internet is not cooperating. Oh, great. I'm going to go down there and see that internet. Those people make me ill. Hey, there's a delayed reaction. Huh. Interesting. You know what that means. I get extra life because I already did that. Now I see it. Isn't that cool? See? I should learn to juggle. At least entertain people with <laughs> some. <laughs> I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start turning down the gas. Hey, if Laura's watching, tell her to send us a question from this week. Only one I have is that one that's uh, hard starting and natural. Oh man. <laughs> well, we can we can touch on that. Hard starting on natural gas. We didn't ask him about propane though, did we? But see, that one was complicated because he added shutoff valves and all kinds of stuff. And when people modify our systems, anytime Sean comes to me with this really technical can't, it's so freaky how it's happening. Come to find out this one little thing that the customer did that, you know, and we love our customers, but they always want to like juice it up or something. A flame is wiggling. Uh, what we should have done is some of these freakos that questions that we've had and freaky things that we couldn't figure out we should have documented some of the results and what it finally was a lot of times it's the wrong size hookup hose or something like that but uh whatever happened with the guy that uh, one side was firing the other side wasn't did you ever <laughs> okay, we do have some viewer questions. Hey! They took pity on our language. <laughs> Thank you. They're like, I can't stand this anymore. Okay, so we have a, one question that came in from Eddie. Hello, Eddie. Eddie wants to know, how efficient is your conversion kit as opposed to a generator that was made to run on gas? Gasoline? I think he probably means like a like a hybrid OEM hybrid. See, you just took a shot with that, and the whole answer could be totally different. When he means well, gas, we could say Eddie. Eddie, do you mean gasoline? Do you mean gasoline, or I'm sure he would have said, "Hey, I got a I got a dual fuel," which we need to talk about. But most likely, he means gasoline. I'd 
I'd be surprised if it doesn't mean gasoline. Come on, Joey. Uh, Eddie. See, I remember that. I use word association. Remember the show, Mr. Eddie's Father? That was such a cute show. Mr. Eddie's Father. He means propane. Huh? He wants to run on propane instead of propane? Uh, I think he... <laughs> I think he means Eddie. You can <laughs> clarify with us. Are you talking about a oh, like something that you buy off the shelf that can run on gasoline or propane? And you're wondering if that how that works compared to a gasoline unit with the motor snorkel applied? Are you messing with me? This is this is real. I think you're messing with me. <laughs> is it more efficient to run your kid on propane than it is to run on propane? See, that wouldn't make sense. Mr. Producer Man. I'm not, you know, I'm not splitting hairs, you know, but it does make, I want to give the right answer. I mean, that's part of the whole premise of the show is to give answers to questions. Are we waiting on Joey? Come on, Joey. Type Eddie. faster. Eddie. Eddie, Eddie. Why do I say Joey? It wasn't Mr. Joey's father. It's Mr. Eddie's father. Where's uh, Eddie out of? Don't know. Is that in Wisconsin? Don't know Wisconsin? No, we don't we don't have his his location. Uh, man, we should spy on people. Everybody spies on us. So Doc, maybe you could take it <laughs> and just answer Sing a song, okay. However you want to do interpret it. How you want to interpret it. Uh well I guess I can give a a blanket comment that our systems produce Man, how you say this? People always think you puff up your your uh, your product, but we've seen we've seen some tremendous results going to propane. As a matter of fact, uh, I heard them doing a generator outside yesterday, and on gasoline, it was like bam, 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 bam. I'm gonna write a song one day that goes like that. Bam, 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 bam. bam. You know, called the generator song. And then you put it on propane, it's like bam. So that had to be the end of the song, you know, like bam, 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 switch, 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 just smooth as silk. And so with propane, you can fine tune the adjustment and get the full power out of it. Where gasoline, you're stuck with a jet. So there you go. Almost always you get as good, if not better performance out of propane. If that's the gas we are indeed talking about and not some other gas nitrous oxide or something, I don't know. There are other gases. There's gases all over the place. Yeah, there's gas right here. Okay, so Eddie has clarified. Hey, thank you, Eddie. He says he wants to know if you use a kit that converts uh, a gasoline generator to run on propane, will a generator that was made to run on propane waste less or more propane? So I think another way of asking that question is, does uh, adding the motor snorkel kit and running on propane mean that the generator will run just as efficiently as if it was manufactured by the factory? We have heard horror stories about so-called biofuel gasoline propane units, and people order kits all the time, motor snorkel kits to go on them. So, uh, and we hear good things. So, I yeah, it's good if not better. And then too, you run natural gas. The other thing I see people say, oh, I don't, I won't be using natural gas. I don't have it. But the turnover of generators is pretty amazing. That's where we get our repeat business from. People who normally, you know, go to another generator and they want to sell off the old one. Well, if it's tri fuel, it's right. You know, it can match many different people. Whereas if it's just one of those units, and if what we found out is the units that have a built-in regulator, the regulators are very suspect and do not last very long at all. We hear that complaint all the time. They're brand new looking, shiny, pretty, no good. All right, Doc. So we do have another question that came in online. This is from Danny. Hey, Danny. This is an oldie but a goodie, Doc. You're is it one of those oldie you're, goodies? You're like Are you faking question. me out here? No, this is right. Oldie yeah. goodie. So Danny wants to know, 
How long will a 5,000 genera- uh, 5, watt generator run on a barbecue t- uh, grill sized propane bottle? All right. 5KW is 10 horsepower ish. And so uh, 10,000 BTU per horsepower. So that's 100,000 BTU. Propane's 92,000 BTU per gallon. So to use just around a gallon an hour at full load. So if, you're, if your manufacturer booklet says at a quarter load, it'll use, it'll run this long on gasoline, you can, you can go apples to apples. If it says, most, most of them come with, like if it's a five gallon tank, quarter load, it says you'll get you know, 22 hours out of it. Well, you'll get 22 hours out of a grill bottle. Only if it's a true 20 pound cylinder. That's the thing. Uh, these racks have 15 pound cylinders. So, do what? we go to the video? <laughs> <laughs> you know, they'll be playing this this show at nursing homes. You realize that? <laughs> it seems like a, it seems like a great time to show the. Uh, maybe we don't. Maybe we don't have it queued up. Oh yeah, okay. we do. We sure do. The racks only have 15 pound cylinders. So when you go to a rack, you have 15 pounds, you divide that by 4.2, and you get less than four gallons of propane. I think it's 3.8 gallons. That's all you're getting out of a grill bottle. So if anybody says, oh, I run my grill bottle, I don't get you know, the same as I do out of five gallons of gasoline, that's because you're most likely buying them out of the rack. Now, what most people think is once you buy out of the rack, you have to keep swapping out of the rack, and that is not true. You rip that ugly label off that they put on there, and you just carry it to any refilling station, get it refilled, because it's your cylinder. So feel free. But, yeah, you're, uh, did anybody do the math? 15 divided by 4.2. Come on, Sean, real quick. I think it is something, 3.8 or 3.7, something like that. Uh, Four point two. Three point five seven. Three point five seven. All right, we'll go with three point six. So you're missing a gallon and a quart. So you're you're being shorted a gallon and a quart when you go to a rack. So uh, get them refilled. It's the way to go. Uh, and you'll have one point two more gallons of propane. And then yeah, you're equal to five gallons of gasoline or better if. We have customers tell us that because they fine tune their load block or calibrator screw and they get better performance. I think that answers that oldie but goodie. I want to see if this thing bubbling. It's bubbling. I want to see it freeze up because I'm going to have to refill it tonight. We should cook something in there. Some hot dogs. Hot dogs, marshmallows, all this junk food. Why couldn't we cook a... Uh, a Caesar salad. <laughs> okay, I'm just uh, just kind of reading the comments here. Some discussion about the... Like, why aren't you off the air? <laughs> no wonder you've been gone three weeks. <laughs> you stink. You stink. You can send me a you stink. I don't care. I do think. Actually, I have no script. See, this is all bogus. I'm writing it down as I go. Like, I'm just here to answer questions. Sean does all the tricks. <laughs> all right. So, um, yeah, there's just some additional comments here about the dual fuel generators and so forth. Um, yes. Gary wants to know how high the flame is shooting. I'm going to give it. 12 to 15 inches, probably. Yeah, easily. Yeah. Don't make one of these at home. They're dangerous. <laughs> and I'm a right. source on that. <laughs> this is actually a camping light that I modified. You know, one of those with the globes in it? Oh, I shouldn't tell you that. But what's nice about it is they come with the adjuster and the, the regulator built in. They got this little regulator here. It is kind of cool. But the blue lights, you couldn't see them on, on the picture. Keep this in mind. Yeah. Call your attention to the, the screen. Just take, oh. take <laughs> it with a grain of salt. <laughs> yeah. 
That's what I should have done is powered that off of this. That would have been cool. Turn this on. All right, I'm going to turn it back off. That would have been cool. I'm getting hot, so I'd turn it down. Yeah, so uh, plenty of folks watching today, Doc, but uh, not, not a whole lot of questions. They probably want some so. information. Like, why would they be watching? Maybe they're incarcerated. This may be one of those uh, jailhouse uh, specials. You know, people go, oh, man, yeah. I don't know. I wish I had questions to answer. Maybe we can make up some. But, you know, what are the basics? Propane is going to burn clean. Uh, if you're camping, it's safer. Uh, I've told the story about two campers side by side. This camper had a propane generator. This one had a gasoline. It could have been backwards, but they all slept with their windows open because it was uh, halfway pleasant out. This generator's exhaust was aimed at their neighbor, which is always a kind thing to do. And this one was named that, aimed that way. The people in this camper died from the fumes from this person's generator, which is so terribly sad. And the most ironic part of it is these people had a clean generator. They were running propane that couldn't kill anybody. And so, uh, man, if, if you're around that stuff, and of course, you know, pressure washers, if, if you're a parent and you're using a pressure washer and your little kids are around it, they're going to get monoxide. And uh, if you don't want them getting monoxide. And see, a, a fine running propane generator, and you can't get it to run unfine to the point where it even produces power. But a, a fine running propane generator or um, pressure washer, lawnmower, it's like running a uh, space heater. And think about that. A space heater, you can run an unvented propane space heater in a trailer. Think about that. And be just fine. How much more so outside, you know, instead of parts per billion, it's parts per gadzillion. Actually, it's Yoda zillion, I think. Yoda, isn't it the high? No, they got a new one after Yoda. After Star Wars did the Yoda thing, they had to add more zeros and go beyond Yoda. But, uh, yeah, Google that. A Yoda, a Yoda watt or a Yoda, uh, Yoda something, right? Right, Mr. Producer? One Yoda the highest? The highest <laughs> in, the, in the Star Wars uh, universe? That no, talking? no, no, no. He stole the, he had to have stolen a term from when he was in college, you know, Yoda. Like a Yoda bite. You could have, one day we'll have, computers with Yoda bites. Now, I know the dude on Star Wars couldn't bite anything, but uh, I think he was a licker, wasn't he? I don't, I don't know anything about Star Wars. I just remember he had a big goopy mouth. <clears throat> I was 20 years old back then. Yeah. <sighs> well, still no new questions. So, I know, um, I'm boring myself. You know, it is the... <laughs> <laughs> It is the time of year we can. We can I mean, show, we go through all this effort to do this work and put on this show. We could show the the pressure washer video. Would well, be nice if if you offered the audience, hey, we have a few videos we could show. Somebody send in what they'd like to see. Wouldn't it be better than me picking one? We have the pressure washer. We have the, uh, of course, Wolfie, and we have. Uh, what else you got? Well, you got you got the you're the producer. The log splitter. Log splitter. Uh, Got the old rice puff video we haven't shown in a while. The rice puff. If some don't know what Wolfie is, then let us know. Wolfie is our favorite show because uh, we had shrapnel. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. All right. It, it, producer decision. We're going to show Wolfie. Oh, you're not giving them enough time. Let it's them only pick 30 one. seconds. Let them pick one. Okay. You can do Wolfie as you're waiting for someone else to pick All something right. else. This is from our greatest hits collection. <laughs> the human greatest hits. And it was a go ahead and set it up for us, Doc. What were we demonstrating with this? Uh, uh, this is about limits of flammability. We have customers that complain they're not getting enough fuel to their engine regulator and their carburetor when in reality they are flooding it because you can flood almost instantly on vapor. So uh, what I demonstrated was putting in a whole bunch of propane, I forget how many shots, five or something like that, 
and tried igniting it. It has a grill igniter that tick, 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 you know, and uh, it wouldn't ignite. Took the tubes off, blew it out with air, put the cap back on, put two ticks, and then hit the button. And I, I, I purposely capped it off. I always had it open so that the flame could shoot out. But this time I capped it off because I really wanted the effect of what happens if you give it the right air fuel mixture. And here we go. Yeah, that's what, <laughs> when I closed my eyes, that's what I saw. I don't know what happened to Wolfie. Let's, let's take a look. And here we go. And he's in there. Actually, I just froze up. I'm not seeing it, right? Because all I see is me. Yeah. This is for all the visually impaired folks out there that are. Yeah, I don't know. Wolfie is uh, is not queued up, I suppose. See what I'm talking about? <laughs> so nobody picked anything, huh? Maybe they haven't seen the show to know what was on there. We have a pressure washer that we converted. We have a log splitter that might be available. We have uh, hey, we we have a we've stalled enough that we now have some more questions. Hey, cool. Although certain uh, members of your family have requested the Wolfie video, I won't, I won't <laughs> reveal who they are. They were just hoping I'd cash it in one day, but it. Uh, so yeah, so onto the questions. Uh, this is um, Gary. Gary wants to know what fuel makes the most horsepower between propane and natural gas? Oh, definitely propane. Yeah. 92,000 BTU per gallon. It equates to, uh, I have it on the website. Uh, it equates to either right at 80,000 BTU. And the, the thing, the caveat about natural gas is it can be different uh, BTU per cubic foot. So, and it can vary during times of the year. If a natural gas line pressure is dropping, uh, now this technology changes so fast. The whole world is one language now, so they probably, I'm just going by past experience, but like in the winter when gas, when the, when the uh, natural gas line would, uh, pressure would drop, they would subsidize a propane, a propane air mixture and and so uh, it could be different BTU per cubic foot. And so it could be more powerful or less powerful, but no matter what, propane is always more powerful. And butane, for our folks down in Texas, you can run butane. Uh, we showed that, didn't we show that? Or no, we didn't show that, we just did it. We have a tank of butane that we were testing and uh, you know, butane is the most powerful. Uh, but yeah, Ga uh, propane is it. For show, but yeah. you can run a motor off a donut, though. Don't forget that. It's true. It's true. So we have another question. This is from Joe. Yo, Joe. Joe is asking what propane mix, propane mixer, in forklift style, would you use on an Onan thirty ek with the Ford two forty straight six with the factory one barrel gasoline carb? Yes. Uh, to to uh, convert to tri fuel with whatever fittings to the air intake. Whoa, 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 man! I was going along great with that one until he said tri fuel. Uh, that is a biggie to run tri fuel because you're you're working with C and G, and so uh, you got to compress the natural gas. So uh, hopefully you mean biofuel, gasoline, or propane. So if that's the case, the engine regulator I would definitely recommend would be an Impco Model J. They are by far the best manufactured regulator on the market. They're, MCO has such high quality uh, uh, manufacturing techniques. Their factory is spotless. We were out there last summer, visited with MCO, and I'm not just plugging them because of that, but I could, we could provide cheaper regulators for our customers in, in, an, in an attempt to get prices down, but 
I just won't do it. The MCO regulators are just so. If you've seen, if you've seen, well, I can. This one doesn't. This one doesn't have a name on it. Where's? Oh, it's gone. Oh well. Man, everything disappears around here. I bet you people steal my stuff between shows. Oh wait a minute. <laughs> I'm just deaf, dumb, and blind. Uh, it's hard to tell. Well, probably hard to tell, but the quality of this compared to this is just phenomenal. So you open these up, they're clean. You open these up, you, you see slag and other stuff in them. Uh, but they're the same ones who make the JB or the JE. Well, the JB is the best for that. Yeah, and it's it can handle 60 horsepower. As a matter of fact, we have one. Sean, bring us that regulator that's over there. Isn't it in here? What can Brown do for you? No. Oh, man, I think I moved it. That's a shame. Anyway, I could have showed you a picture of one. Or showed you a real one that was modified by a UPS truck. <laughs> oh, was it a T60? That's what I said, T60. Didn't I say a T60? Oh, JB, yeah, JB is the, uh, so I guess it's low impact, but this, this, this is what happened to our, no, this is T60, yeah, T60, oh, that's right, I said JB, see, <laughs> you think that was sabotaged, that is beautiful, I, I'd like to get it in one of those, get that acrylic stuff, where you just bloop, 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 you know, and you make it into a block, because that's all it is now is a block. It's of no value whatsoever. But uh, yeah, that's why. Some things in life you save. All right, the popular other than your dignity <laughs> is to show Wolfie, which I think we've worked out the uh, technical issues. So here we go. I'm Limits. not going to say here we go one more time. I got it. Here we go. Now let's give Wolfie two ticks. One thousand two. Now I'm gonna step over here. <laughs> you know, that sound is like you think it was uh faked up on that, but that's exactly how it <laughs> So yeah, that's that's the right amount of air fuel mixture. If I did if I had put two or three more ticks in there, it would not have done that. And we showed that right before that. He never shows that part. But, uh, yeah, that was Wolfie. And Wolfie's still over there. We just haven't rebuilt it yet. Haven't decided whether we will or not. But <laughs> Wolfie's a battle-scarred remnant of days gone by. All right. Well, no more new questions. I think it uh, might be time to wrap it up unless you want to show an additional video. As I said, it's, the, it's up to the audience. I've seen them all. Actually, I was in them all. But, uh, you know, somebody out there must want to see something. Of, don't, pressure washer, wood splitter. I had a weed eater. I don't know if you have that one. Propane tank's not full. And propane tank's not full in a rack, and but man, we're getting ready to shoot the one on the uh, my John Deere ZTR. That's gonna you'll really enjoy that one. Uh, but uh, anyway, oh, I'm supposed to. Yeah, it's about time of year I can do my secret video. I was gonna do on my own. I was gonna do it and bring it in and play it. But anyway, so I guess I'm I'm done. I don't get paid extra for this, so. Uh, Joe did follow up with his question about the, the large engine. Yep. He says, I'm wondering, uh, what I'm wondering about is the fittings that allow the output of the mixer to be mounted on top of the intake of the gasoline car, like it could have been ordered from the factory. Uh, boy, that's a that's a rarity. We always remote mo remote mounted the regulators 
because uh, you have to tie into the water jacket. And getting all that around the carburetor is nearly impossible because you have five eight teeter hose. You got to get in and out of that regulator, keep it from freezing up because you'll be drawing liquid. So you have liquid lines coming in. You have. Um, do we have a J back there? We should have. You talking about a mixer? Yeah. He said regulator. Did he say mixer? He said mixer. Why don't you give me that question again? Well, maybe I missed it. All right. Well, let's back up. The first question was, let's see. What propane, what propane mixer would oh. you use on an Onan 30 EK with the Ford 240 straight six with the factory one barrel gasoline carb to convert to tri-fuel with whatever fittings to the air intake to mount the mixer on top of the gasoline carb like Onan did from the factory. Right, and his nope. follow-up was he's wondering about the fittings that allow the output of the mixer to be mounted on top of the intake. Of All the right, carb. Now, you, now I'm understanding. So you're keeping your original gasoline carburetor throttle body. Uh, my question would be, do you have a hose off the top of the, the carburetor to your air box? If you do, that is the most convenient method is to cut into that hose and install a mixer in line to mix right ahead of the carburetor. If not, then um, there are adapters if they're available. A lot of that stuff is passe. But if it is a round hose, most of them ducted, you know, had a round ducted hose from the carburetor over to the air box so you can clean the air filter by opening the door on the on the on the unit so uh, if you do have that just give us the idea of the hose and we can set you up with an adapter to go in line so it works pretty good I don't think I have one up here nope still got one but uh, man I'm sorry follow-up is would it just be low pressure approximately two PSI natural gas or ran on gasoline. The mixer for biofuel would be just mounted on top of the gasoline carburetor. Yeah, see with the with that mix with the with the mix the adapter mixer in line, it's it's designed for negative pressure. Now uh, <laughs> he's carrying all uh, no, not yet, unless it gets to that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so it, it's based on the airflow through the air inlet line that's going to create the signal to bring the fuel in. So, uh, is this stationary? Did he say generator or something? Or is it a forklift? Or, yeah. He said forklift in the original question. Yeah, I thought he did. Okay. But see, I, I don't see him running natural gas on. I don't see tri fuel on forklift. I have never seen one in my life. I suppose that somebody's done it, but because you have to have a CNG tank where you have to pump it up to like 3,000 psi to run natural gas, <clears throat> whereas a forklift cylinder, is, you know, is eight gallons and makes. 270 times itself. So if you take eight gallons times 270. Uh, you'll get how much vapor is in there. But anyway, um, it is designed to create the signal necessary to go to that Model J I was talking about earlier. And the Model J will, it's a demand regulator, just like these back here. So as there's a demand on the airflow, it will deliver the fuel accordingly. And I hope that answers that question. But uh, he's talking about that adapter we were talking about the other day we have gobs of what stick hose oh, the red one. Yeah, yeah. now that would be useful <laughs> but again do, we would need to know the the hose size and the id of it id internal diameter internal diameter i like those big words i take i take uh uh, I can't remember what I take now. License. Liberty and license, which is the language. 
I like this one. I love to see propane boil. That is so cool. All right, here's here's what you would do. Let's see, if you have a hose like this running from your carburetor to your air box, you would slice that out of there and put that in there. See, there's this venturi holes in it, and so as the air is passing through, it's going to create a negative signal here to the engine supply regulator simple as that these have been around for uh, this is made by beam this has been around for, these have been around for 60 70 years they're like you can't do anything wrong to them they're like a rock easy to install and that's how you would do it if if it is another type hey I'll see an air horn now at the top of your carburetor the air horn you too used to snorkels. Hey if your Joe, air horn is round like this, it would slip down on like that. Joe did confirm that um, it is a generator on a trailer. <laughs> See, I go through all this. He's, he's going to send a couple pictures. Okay, yeah, info at uscarb.com. But, uh, yeah, if it's a generator, that's def definitely different. And uh, we'll fix you up on that one. Now, if it's something you're going to switch back and forth constantly... Um, we need to talk about the engine regulator but as for the mixer this this would probably be it because I don't have my book in front of me so I don't know exactly what engine configuration that is it's funny when your producer's on his cell phone He's going well. He's mostly looking at ways for going home. You know, W A Z. Mostly. Oh, uh, oh no, there's uh, traffic over here. Yeah, <laughs> that's how I'm getting the comments <laughs> from Facebook. Oh, uh, okay. I knew that. I'm just busting your chops. Are we clean? I don't see anything new coming in. So all uh, right, we're tired of old. Old is wrap old. it up. We gonna wrap it up. How long have we been? Oh man, we've been long enough. All right, so all the people who tuned in to get some assistance with your insomnia, we hope we we're helpful. But then again, by now you're not even hearing me because you've already succumbed. But for the rest of you, we're glad you could join us this time on the Dr. Hughes Show. And we invite you back next week, hopefully Tuesday or Thursday. We're sorry we took a hiatus for two weeks, but uh, sometimes it happens that way. The vicissitudes of life. Look that word up, vicissitudes. I love that word. All right, so that means my lamp is out, and we are... The mug. I uh, know. Uh, I just got the mug. And uh, uh, thank you for your questions. We'll be back next time. And in the meantime, don't ever forget, be a nice human. See you next time.